Capitol here at the United States Capitol for the Women's March on Washington. About to discover why women are out here protesting President Donald Trump's inauguration and, of course, election last year. But as you can see, there's nobody up here on the Capitol. It's all taking place down on Constitution Avenue, where I can already hear a lot of the sounds and noises and cheers of the people that come out for protests. I need help. My young officer, Officer Saunders, it's her birthday. Does everybody know the song? Yeah. Can we do it? Yeah. Alright, ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. <laughs> the party just keeps going. <laughs> Thank you, police. Show me what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. Show me what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. What does community mean to you? A sense of belonging, everyone's accepted, all religions, all colors, all sexes. It means people who get along and love each other and take care of each other. Together, helping people, building something better than what you have. And what inspired you to be here today? I mean, I'm a daughter of immigrants, so I'm here because I was privileged enough to grow up in this area and I'm here for my parents who um, fought a lot of stigmatism to be here. And what's the most difficult thing about hosting a community event that brings everyone together? Porta potty. <laughs> we need a lot of patience. Everybody's got to be good and patient. We're all going to get there. <laughs> it's hard to organize everything when there's so many people. Getting, getting everybody together. In our busy schedules, we kind of forget um, there are more important issues at stake, and um, I think that's probably the most difficult thing to do when trying to put something like that together. People management, getting along, having a plan, sticking to it. I don't know. One of the things that really pisses me off is, you know, maternity leave. You know, first of all, what if two men are having a child together? Is that called maternity leave? And then all the modern companies have paternity leave. But what we found from uncovering our research is, men don't take paternity leave. Why? Because it's a sign of it shows a sign of weakness. So what we are recommending is mandatory parental leave to create the equal playing field again. If men and women who have a child both take you know, time off, then we won't have that, con you know, unconscious bias when we're interviewing a man and a woman. My comment, and, and this is what happened to me in real life, but part of the bigger picture isn't just parental leave, it's family leave, and there's okay. family leaves, and this just, my personal story, and I'm single, I don't have children, my dad retired early, one day fell and crushed a bunch of vertebrae, and because he was on such heavy pain medication, the power of attorney kicked in, and I overnight became my dad's parent. So what I'm and my business is, is an app in care and caregiving, and all the research shows, 85% of the time, when there is a, a need for a family caregiver, like where I to provide care for my dad, or and I was lucky enough to be able to afford to pay caregivers for my dad, someone has to monitor and manage that care. 85% of the time today, it's still a woman doing it. Yeah. Yeah. We are our family's caregivers, and I had to roll back what I was doing. If you're in a job nine to five where a boss can see you. And most of those calls around care and care, I think doctors, hospitals, or during business hours. I would have been, I would have fired myself. I mean, you just, you can't do a good job and you're, you know, you're juggling a lot of things and you can't do right by your family and you can't do right by your work. It's a constant struggle. So my point is, family leave needs to become a real conversation. We enter the workforce 50-50 on average. We end up at about 17% in the C-suite. We lose 
women in particular in the middle. We call it the messy middle. It's because you're getting more responsibility at home, more responsibility at work, and you do one of three things. You either opt out completely to raise your family, entering back in is very complicated, or you opt into leadership but you have that work-life balance issue which creates an enormous amount of stress, or you leave and start your own company and write your own rules, which is what I did to create the uncorporate rules, which is why we want to make the uncorporate rules the new norm so that we can all push through and move to the top. We can talk about the challenges of being a young working mother going back to the workplace and figuring out, oh my gosh, where am I going to you know, pump? What am I going to do with putting the milk in the fridge? What am I going to, you know, how is this going to work? And creating this this community where people can feel like they can get the information. If you had a wish in the workplace today, what would it be? What, what, would, what rule do you want to break and what new rule do you want to create? As I plan my future and I'm deciding, you know, law school or, you know, jump into politics, what I want to do, I am very fearful of the image a woman needs to have. You know, you can't be too feminine, but you can't be like too masculine and it's like you can't be yourself and like I'm someone that's kind of in the middle like sometimes I will dress up when I'm in the mood sometimes I will speak a certain way and I feel like I'm always conscious during meetings and I'm always conscious when I'm speaking with um, professors or so speaking with someone who's younger than me and it's like I feel like there's a lot of pressure to be a certain way in different industries you know if you're in computer science you're expected to be nerdy or if you're in um, if you're an athlete, you're expected to be like very sporty, but you can't dress up. So I feel like you have to lean a certain way. And my wish something. would be to not have that pressure to yeah. be as expressive as you want. So um, I asked to jump in because I just actually told this, this story the other day to two, some women that were in my office. And I'll tell it to you. But I would say my first reply to you is then don't. Right, you have that the power to feel the way you know. I think Eleanor Roosevelt said, um, "No one can make you feel a certain way unless you let them." And you really have to stay focused and keep that in your mind. When I came back after having my first child, I felt really self-conscious because I still wanted to be um, thought to be taken seriously. Yeah. I didn't want anyone to think that now that was, even though it was a very big priority, that I wasn't just as committed to my job. And I was really self-conscious about talking about my kids about putting pictures in my office because you spend so much time in the office why shouldn't I have that there why shouldn't I express myself and I think you know I go back to the way with my old self and I feel sad that she ever felt that way so if you're good just be be yourself and just rock on I had an aha moment you know in my career I must have been 30 years old I'm now 54 so it was a long time ago mm -hmm. And I was in market research, and I was one of the few women. And I used to dress like a man. I would dress in these very conservative suits, and I would always put my hair in a ponytail. And I, you know, I thought, oh, I'm supposed to be that because I don't want anyone to think I'm so smart because I'm not, you know, an old school, you know, old lady with a bun, which is what most researchers, you know, were as women. So I kind of dressed like that. And then one day, I went to this lunch with this power woman in research, and. I had my hair in a bun, and I'm in this really ugly suit, and I walk in, and she is this va 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 voom awesomeness, and her hair flowing, and she's wearing makeup, and in this like little leather, nothing show, you know, yeah. conservative, but fabulous. And I said to her, wow, I said, you dominate, you're so good at what you do, you're not afraid to be, you know, a woman in business, she goes, are you kidding, it's how I stand out, I'm great at what I do, and I'm going to change. Took my hair out of my my. I like unzipped a little bit, and I brought my femininity to the boardroom ever since then. And she taught me that I can be who I am and own it. And it was the best lesson that I ever received. And that's why we work so hard on giving back with generosity things that we wish we had rising the ranks and it didn't it didn't I do think that this is really an expectation of our generation to have that to have that sort of office culture where you can own it yeah. you can be you you can dress and express yourself how you feel most comfortable because if you're busy worrying about that and how people are perceiving you there's no way you're doing your best work right it's it all starts with feeling comfortable look for an office culture would be my advice that yeah 
yeah. that supports that because they're there. This also is disturbing because why should we have to ask for it? You know, men just get it and women have to quote unquote ask for it. And you know, we, we need to move to, I learned this in Davos also. I always talk about transparency, but in Davos we learned about hyper transparency. Hyper transparency, good words. But when I sold my company and I now was an employee and I needed to figure out how much money I should make, I had no idea. And I read all the articles I'm supposed to ask for more, but I wasn't even sure what more or less was. So I had a female lawyer that was, you know, the lawyer at Ipsos where I sold to. And I said to her, she said, so what kind of salary do you want? I said, I don't know. I haven't taken a salary in any kind of way in quite some time. I said, but I want to get paid what everyone else does. So why don't you just give me what I was one of 10 out of, you know, 16,000 on the top of the board. So just give me what they make, men and women, whatever they make, I want the same thing because I don't want to be different. And she says, well, you know, there's, you know, everyone has a little different package. I said, well, go, you figure it out. So she comes back and she says to me, God, you're smart. She says, I had to give you the highest salary because this guy had the highest salary out of the 10. And then I had to give you the highest bonus because this woman had a higher bonus. And then I had to give you the highest equity because someone else had the highest equity. So she says, you have the number one package in the whole company now. She says, because you made me feel responsible for you. So I didn't ask and I didn't do my homework because what, I'm going to come back and threaten them? I just put it back on them. And I put the onus on them to say, you pay me what others at my level are being paid. And I thought that was a very clever thing to do because it put the onus on the company to be hyper transparent. And you know, now I set a new standard because if someone else says I want what she has, it's gonna be this whole new package. Yeah. But I also so. think women have to feel good enough to ask for it. Yeah. Because what I've witnessed having been a leader and a manager of a lot of people over the years is men will always ask before they're even ready or yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and women wait until they're ready for almost the next promotion yeah. before they ask for the one that is you know right in front of them um, and that is about owning your power and making you know and going for it.